Hi everyone, today's session is going to be a GCSE physics session and um, it's all about transformers, their uses and a little bit of exam practice. Um, so if you don't know me already, my name is Prashela, I'm the GCSE physics tutor for the online school. I study at Loughborough University and it's my fourth year as a tutor. Okay, so this session is going to be one hour long. It is all recorded and put up on YouTube um, for you to rewatch if you do miss any notes. So don't worry about taking them down. Um, and what we're going to cover today is know what a transformer is and why it is constructed the way that it is. Describe how the process of um, a transformer works. Know how to use the coils and voltage linking equation that might sound might sound slightly weird but um, it will make sense later. Know how to calculate the power in a transformer. So you can see that we don't have much content today which is really exciting because I've got a new thing planned for today's session which is um, a Kahoot style quiz so hopefully that should be really fun. Then we'll go through a few example exam questions and um, just to kind of top it up and end it off and then time for questions at the end. So let's start with our content for today. Starting with a summary of what we covered in yesterday's webinar. So yesterday's webinar was all about the generator and the motor effect. So we talked about defining the motor effect and the fact that if we have a wire in a magnetic field or a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field, it creates a magnetic field around it. Okay, so a wire has a magnetic field around it. When you place it into a magnetic field that's already existing, those two magnetic fields interfere with each other and we get motion. So we know that the wire moves without us touching it and we need to know kind of what direction that it moves in. So we use Fleming's left hand rule and hopefully you remember that the thumb means motion the first finger means field and the second finger means current, okay? They should all be at right angles to each other, making this weird l shape thing. Um, and always use your left hand so you get all your answers the correct way around. Then we went on to talk about how speakers and electric motors use the motor effect. Um, so we talked about how sound waves vibrate the diaphragm of a speaker, which changes it into... Um, electric signal, so that was a really cool application that we looked at. Then we went on to define the generator effect, which is another, um, similar to motor effects, but slightly different. And it's all about how we can induce potential difference, induce voltage to create a current. And then talks about how we can increase this potential difference and how we can change the direction of it using a few different factors. And lastly, we went on to talk about its applications to an AC and a DC motor, which is arguably the most important part of the session um, because it does come up a lot in GCSE questions. So as always, if you do want to um, go and see that webinar again, make notes, um, or if there, is, if there was something that you didn't understand, um, just go back over it. Cool, okay, so moving on to today's content, we have the transformer. So the transformer is a device that can increase or decrease the voltage of an alternating current. Okay, so this is a transformer in the diagram and we have an input AC. So that's alternating current. So there's some alternating current source coming into this wire, which is wrapped around. Then we have an AC output. It's an alternating current that comes out of the transformer. Now, this transformer, its whole purpose is to increase the voltage or decrease the voltage, okay? Only using coils wrapped around a core, okay? So it's a really great way of being able to increase voltages by big amounts without having to pump lots of power in. So as you can see, we have a coil on the left and a coil on the right. The coil on the leftmost side is the primary coil, and the coil on the right-hand side is the secondary coil. 
In other words, the coil that matches the input is the primary coil and the coil that matches the output is the secondary coil. Now, as you can see, there are more coils on the left-hand side than there are on the right-hand side. If there are more coils on the left, going to less coils on the right, it's a step-down transformer and vice versa. If there's more coils on the right and less coils on the left, it's a step-up transformer. So what do these two words mean, step-up and step-down? Well, step-up transformer means to step up the voltage, so increase the voltage, increase the potential difference. Step-down transformer means to decrease the potential difference. Okay, so we're decreasing the voltage. So we have two types, step up and step down. And they're made from these two coils which are wrapped around an iron core. So this material here, this kind of rectangle with a hole cut out, this is iron, okay? And the reason that it's iron is because as we talked about yesterday, Iron is a magnetic material. Okay, so iron is a magnetic material. Now, um, it's easily magnetized. So not only is it a magnetic material, it's actually really easy to magnetize. And you'll remember yesterday when we were talking about um, electromagnets, we were talking all about having an iron core, which can be easily magnetized. So an iron core is really good for electromagnets and for transformers. The iron core, its purpose is to transfer the magnetic fields created in the primary coil to the secondary coil. Okay, so that is the purpose of the iron core, to take the magnetic fields created in this coil and transfer them to the secondary coil. Okay, that's the whole purpose of the iron core. The reason that it's iron is it can do that very efficiently. Okay, so how does a transformer work? This is the big, big part of the topic. The most important question is how does a transformer work? And there have been several six mark, four mark questions over the years with just um, this as the question. No other help, no other information, how does a transformer work? So a primary voltage drives the input alternating current through the primary coil. So we have a voltage on this hand side which drives the current into the coil. Okay, so remember currents can't just exist on their own. They need a voltage to push them. Okay, so they need a voltage to push the electrons round and create a current in a circuit, in a wire. So that voltage that we have drives the current, which is an alternating current. Okay, so we have voltage creating and pushing this current through this input primary coil. The primary coil current then produces a magnetic field. As we know from yesterday, a current carrying wire, which we have in the primary coil, produces a magnetic field. Now here's the new bit. The magnetic field changes as the alternating current changes. So as we know, an alternating current constantly changes direction. Okay, so an alternating current goes from positive to negative, positive to negative, and so on. Now, because that current constantly changes, the magnetic field constantly changes. Okay, so the next step is then the iron core taking the magnetic field and increasing the strength of it. Okay, so that's another purpose of the iron core. Not only does it transfer the magnetic fields, it also increases the magnetic field. So it increases the strength of the magnetic field. Now the changing magnetic field that we have because of the changing input current 
induces a changing voltage in the secondary coil. Okay, so we now have a changing magnetic field in the transformer, which induces, remember induces is another word for creates, creates a changing voltage in the secondary coil. Now, because we have a changing voltage in the secondary coil, we then produce a alternating current in the output. So quite a complicated process, but I've tried to um, simplify it a little bit for you guys. So this is kind of um, a flow diagram of the process, really simply put. Okay, so I'm hoping that it makes sense. We have a voltage primary. So the little P means primary, the little S means secondary. So we have a primary voltage, which drives the primary alternating current. Because we have a changing current, remember alternating current, changing current, means that we have a changing magnetic field. That changing magnetic field gets transferred and strengthened by the iron core. When it's transferred, it goes into the secondary coil. Now, because we still have that changing magnetic field, we produce a changing secondary voltage. And because we have a changing secondary voltage, we have a changing secondary um, alternating current output. Okay, so this is how the transformer works. I would recommend learning it like this and not like this, not learning it word for word. They're not really that specific with the answers to this question. So as long as you have the gist of it um, and in the correct order, they are quite lenient with the marks. So how I would recommend learning it is through this flow diagram. And you can see it's kind of symmetrical in the sense that you have the iron strengthening in the middle, the changing magnetic field on either side of it, and then voltage to current, voltage to current. Yeah, so it is quite um, logical in that sense. Okay, so moving on to our transformers equation. So this is the main equation that we have for transformers and it allows us to tell whether the um, transformer is step up or step down. Okay, so we have primary voltage divided by secondary voltage is the number of turns on the primary coil divided by the number of turns on the secondary coil. Now it's really easy to get mixed up with VP, VS, NP, NS. Put them in different colors so you can see it but it is important that you remember it very specifically. Um, the P and the S are there to help you in terms of primary and secondary, but you will be given this equation on the equation sheet, or if they expect you to use it in a question, um, they might also tell you. So it is quite kind of, makes it easier in that sense. Okay, so we can see that the ratio of the two voltages is the same as the ratio of the two um, numbers of turns. Okay, so the ratio of the voltages is the ratio of the turns. Now this is a really powerful equation because we can find out how many turns we need to make it a step up transformer, what voltage we need to make it a step up transformer, so on and so forth. VP, just means potential difference in the primary input coil. Vs just means potential difference in the secondary output coil. Don't worry about this, it's just doubled it up for some reason. Okay, so this equation does look a bit complicated at first. We've not really seen an equation that looks like this um, so far in the GCSE syllabus. So it's important that you get used to and um, rearranging it. So let's rearrange our equation, for example, for Vs. 
Okay, so let's rearrange our equation for Vs. We want to make Vs the subject. So right now we have Vp over Vs equals Np over Ns. The first thing I'm going to do is times both sides by Ns so that I get Vp Ns over Vs equals NP. Okay, so that's the first step that I did. You guys might choose to do it in a different way, that's fine, as long as you can make VS a subject. Okay, so now what I might do is times both sides by VS. So times both sides up by VS so that I get NS left on the left hand side and on the right hand side I get NP VS. Okay, now remember I want VS alone, so I'm going to divide by NP on both sides. So that I have VP and S divided by NP, which equals Vs. Okay, so we need to get really good at rearranging this equation for any of the four terms. Okay, so that's just an example for rearranging for Vs, but you guys can try um, at home after the webinar what you think the rearrangement would be for Vp, Np and Ns. Okay, so how do we know if it's a step up or a step down transformer? Well, as I previously said, there are two types of transformers and they work with two different voltages and two different numbers of coils. So for a step up transformer, the secondary voltage is bigger than the primary voltage and the secondary number of turns on the coil is bigger than the primary number of turns on the coil. The same kind of thing for step down, but opposite. So for step down, the secondary voltage is lower than the primary voltage. And the secondary number of coils is lower than the primary number of coils. Okay, so step up is all about increasing voltage, which means that the secondary voltage is obviously bigger than the primary voltage. Step down is all about decreasing the voltage um, and taking it from a bigger primary voltage to a smaller secondary voltage. Now, AC or DC. Transformers, and this is really, really important, only work with AC. They do not work with DC. Okay, only work with alternating current. DC does not work because DC is only in one direction. Now, because it's only in one direction and never changes quantity, the magnetic field never changes. And if the magnetic field never changes, we can't produce an alternating current. Okay, so to produce a changing magnetic field, we need to have an alternating current. And to produce AC out of the other side of that, we need to have a changing magnetic field. Okay, so DC does not work, only AC. So you might be thinking, okay, that's all great. We can decrease voltage, we can increase voltage, but where is this actually applicable in real life? Well, if you were there um, quite early on, we talked about the national grid. So when we did the energy topic, we talked about the national grid and how it transfers energy across, um, I was gonna say the earth, the UK. Okay, so how are they used? Well, step up transformers are used to step up potential difference from 25 kilovolts to 132 kilovolts. Now this is done in the generator. So the generator creates electricity of 25 kilovolts roughly. Okay, so the generator does that. 
it then step ups the voltage, steps up the voltage to 132 kilovolts. That then goes in the transmission cables that we see all over the UK. So we've got a really high voltage up in the air in our cables. Then it gets to the other end of the cable and is ready to go into our houses. We know that it's still at 132 kilovolts, that never changes in the cables. So we need to use a step down transformer to make it appropriate to use in our houses. Okay, so by using that step down transformer, we decrease that voltage from 132 kilovolts in the cables to 230 volts in our houses. 230 volts is then what comes out of our sockets. Now you don't need to know the specific quantities except 230 volts because you should know that anyway, that's mains electricity. But don't worry, you don't need to know 25 kilovolts, 132 kilovolts. That's just to give you an idea of just how big it is. So okay, we know that we use step up transformers to increase the voltage get it really high on the cable lines and then step it down to get into our houses. But what's the point? Why would we step it up and then step it back down when we could just have the voltage come from the generator to our houses? Yeah, so the reason that we do this is all about cost, all about efficiency. So by having a really high, and it is really high, potential difference in our cables, and then our cables in the sky, we have a 132 kilovolt um, potential difference. So by having a high potential difference, we can reduce the current. Okay, so by having a high potential difference, we can reduce the current. This reduces the amount of heat created, which reduces the power loss, the energy loss to heat, and increases the efficiency, which makes it more cost effective for the UK. So again, another kind of chain um, process where one thing links to another and leads to another. So by having a high potential difference, we reduce that current. If we reduce current, we reduce heat. If we reduce heat, we reduce the amount of energy lost to heat which means there's more energy to kind of go through the cables and therefore we increase efficiency. It's more cost effective. Okay. Okay. Mm, let's do that again. Okay. What this should say is transformers are nearly 100% efficient. Okay, 100% efficient. That's really hard to come by. Usually, we know that a lot of energy is wasted. So for example, in a kettle, loads of that energy is being wasted to sound and um, kinetic, right? That's not useful to us. We just want to heat up our water. But in a transformer, hardly any of it goes to waste. So we can say that transformers are nearly 100% efficient. And in the GCSE, we assume that they are. Okay, it's a little bit of a bad assumption, but it is quite close, so we'll go with it for GCSE. So we know that transformers are nearly 100% efficient, which means that the power that we put in equals the power that is coming out. Okay, so this statement is really important. The power that comes in is equal to the power that comes out. Now you may remember, if you think all the way back to the electricity webinars, power is equal to IV. Power equals IV, where I is obviously current and V is voltage. So the primary power equals the secondary power. Okay, primary power equals secondary power. We can then change that into a lengthier form of the equation which says that the primary potential difference times the primary current 
equals the secondary potential difference times the secondary current. Okay, so we're changing it from power in equals power out, power primary equals power secondary, using our P equals IV equation to therefore change it into VP times IP equals VS times IS. Okay, so this is another equation that we use in transformers and another equation that you're going to be um, that you're going to need to apply. Okay. Again, it can be quite difficult to rearrange. So you have VP, IP equals VS, IS. So you may see it written like this without the times. That's fine. Just because they're next to each other, that means times in. Okay, so you need to be able to rearrange it for any of those four terms. If we want to rearrange it for VS again, we can just divide both sides by IS. Okay. So two um, a little bit, bit more complicated equations. Although you don't need to remember them, you do need to know how to work with them and rearrange them. So it's still important that you um, get used to seeing it. Remember that power is measured in watts. Okay, that is, I think, all of the content. Yeah, okay, so we can now get started on our quiz. So I thought today, instead of our normal quick fire questions that we always do, we'll do something a little bit different. Okay. So it's a little bit like Kahoot if you've ever done a Kahoot, which I'm sure you have. Um, so could you please go to your device, either use the laptop that you're on, the computer that you're on, open a new tab. Um, you won't need to see the screen, you just need to see the questions. And all your phone, if you've got a smartphone, um, you can do it on there as well. So just type in joinmyquiz.com into your search bar and enter this game code. So there's 36 participants, so I'll just give you a bit of time to get into the game. I'll also share the link on the Zoom chat. Cool, I can see loads of you joining, which is really great. I'm just going to put it on a chat if you guys can't get to it. Cool, we've got 16 participants in. See if we can get a few more of you guys joining. Okay, so I think there's going to be 13 questions. Some of them do have a time limit, so you might need to be a little bit quick and you'll see it kind of count down at the top of your screen. Some will be 20 seconds, some will be um, a whole minute, some will be two minutes. And they get harder and harder as we go along, but it never really gets that hard. The ones at the end are example exam questions and the one before are just kind of quick fire questions to test your knowledge. Okay, I think we'll wait for it to get to 30, if we possibly can. Give us two more minutes.
Um, for Ria, the code is uh, 174787. So I'll put it on the chat as well if you guys can't see it for whatever reason. 174. Seven eight seven. Cool, you're in. Okay, I think we'll start the quiz. Um, the code is in the chat. If you haven't managed to get in just yet, okay, let's go. Oh, loads of you putting your answers in. That's really great. So it should just move you through the questions. Well done to Pranav, who's in the lead right now. Cool, some of you getting really close to the end.
Okay, looks like some of you are starting to finish. I'll give us uh, three more minutes. Maybe, maybe two actually. Some of them do require calculations. Don't worry if you need to take a little bit more time over it. And don't worry if you got a few wrong, we're gonna go through the answers. And hopefully it should tell you what the answer is. Okay, cool, we're gonna move on. And go through the answers. Okay, so question one, 22 of you got it correct, six were slightly incorrect. So the answer for what is a function of a transformer is simply to change the voltage of an alternating current. Okay, so the whole point of a transformer is to either step up the voltage, increase it, or step it down and decrease it. How is a voltage produced on a transformer's secondary coil? So the changing magnetic field in the core cuts across the secondary coil and induces a voltage. What type of current makes transformer work? That's AC. Why is the core of the transformer made from iron? Iron is usually magnetized. Which of these is the correct equation for calculating electrical power? That's P equals IV. Which of these equations correctly links potential differences and the number of turns on the coil of a transformer? Very similar um, three answers there. So don't worry if you did get it incorrect. It's VP over NP equals VS over NS. What kind of transformer converts a higher voltage, 230,000, into a lower voltage, 11,500? That would be a step down. Uh, for this one, you have a transformer converting 460 into 230. The power output is 2.3 kilowatts. How much current is drawn into the primary coil? So the way that you'd attempt this question is first of, all, first of all, by remembering that power output is equal to power input. So 2,300 comes out on the right hand side, 2,300 goes in on the left hand side. Now we know that the primary voltage is 460. And the power is 2.3. So what we can do is power which is 2,300, divide by 460. So what we've done is we've taken P equals IV and we've rearranged it for I, which is power divided by V. When we do 2,300 divide by 460, we get five. So if you write five amps, well done.
Okay, why do national grid overhead transmission cables use very high voltages? Okay, so this one was done slightly incorrectly um, and it is quite a complicated concept. So transmission cables use very high voltages, which means lower currents. Okay, higher voltage means lower currents in the cables. If we have lower currents, we waste less energy. We want to waste as little energy as possible to save us money and increase efficiency. So higher voltages means lower currents which waste less energy. For this one you had a picture and it took 1200 volts from the national grid and changed it into 230 volts to the farm. So because it's going from 1200 to 230 it decreases the voltage, goes from 1,200 to 230, which therefore means it's a step down. So that leaves you with two answers, steel, step down, and iron, step down. And we know that all transformers are made out of iron because it's easily magnetized, so the correct answer would have been iron, step down. Okay. Um, in a step-down transformer, the number of turns on the secondary coil is less than the number of turns on the primary coil. Now, the reason that I think so many of you got it incorrect is just because of it's a fill in the blank um, and you have to get kind of the right word in there. Okay, where is a step-up transformer used as part of the national grid? Tick as many as you think apply. It's actually all of the above. So it's after the generator to take the voltage that's made in the generator, step it up to get a really high voltage in the power cables. After the power station, after the generator, same thing. And then it's before the power line, so same thing, before it gets into the cables and before the pylons. The pylons are the cables, the kind of big triangle figures that hold the cables. So that one will be all of the above. They're all pretty much the same thing, just, in, just said in different ways. In an exam, you would have to say one of them. You would never have to say all four because they are just the same thing. So um, yeah, a step-up transformer is used after the power station or after the generator is what I would probably say. Okay, and the last one was to fill in the blanks um, using coil core, current ends, and field. So a transformer works because an alternating current in the primary coil produces a changing magnetic field in the core and then in the secondary coil. This induces an alternating poten potential difference across the ends of the secondary coil. Okay, so that was all the questions that we had um today i hope you guys enjoyed the quiz um put your opinions in the chat if you think we should do less questions if we should do it again um for other webinars do let me know how you think it went Okay, so I'm just going to go through some questions that you guys have put on the chat and the Q&A function. If you do have any more questions, again, do just put them on the chat. I think there might have been memes in the quiz as well. So hopefully you enjoyed them. I didn't put them on there. They, they kind of do it for you. So hopefully that was fun. Um, okay, someone said go back to slides five and six. Um, I'll leave it on six because someone else wanted that as well. This is the transformer flow diagram. Um, so yeah, as I said, do just learn this diagram and it will really help you to learn the process of how a transformer works. Okay, someone says, are there any, any energy efficient kettles that don't make noise. Um, yeah, actually, so kind of the more expensive the kettles get, the less noise they tend to make. 
And the reason for this is it takes special mechanisms in the kettle to reduce the noise that the kettle makes. Those special mechanisms cost more. So for example, my kettle at home is really cheap and it makes so much noise and it takes a really long time to heat up. Um, and that's because it doesn't have those special mechanisms that allow the noise to come to minimum and therefore put more energy in to heating it up. So they work together. So because my kettle loses so much energy to noise, not enough energy is being put into the water to actually heat it up. But for example, a more expensive, better kettle um, is going to have less energy wasted to noise and more energy uh, put into heating the water. So therefore it would be more efficient. Uh, someone said, how is that true? As I have a really expensive kettle, but it still makes a lot of noise. As I said, it is really hard to make um, appliances energy efficient. So there is inevitably always going to be some wasted energy, which is why transformers are so good because they are nearly 100% efficient and lose as little energy as possible to um, sources that we don't need. Okay, it seems like you guys really like the quiz um, over kind of putting your answers in the chat. So I guess we'll do that again. I don't know if it'll be every webinar because some webinars um, we do have more content to cover. Okay, so that's all the questions. Um, and we'll go through a few more exam questions to finish off the lesson. Okay, so there are 500, hold on, yeah. Okay, so there are 500 turns on one coil of the transformer and 20,000 turns on the other coil. Use the equation in the box to calculate the PD across the secondary coil. Uh, knowing that the PD across the primary is uh, four. Okay, so on the primary coil, we have 500 turns. And on the secondary coil, we have 20,000. So we know that this must be a step up transformer. Okay, so if we do 500 divided by 20,000, we get one over 40 or 0.025. So that equals VP over VS. And we're trying to find the PD across secondary coil. So we're going to rearrange our equation for Vs. I'll times both sides by Vs so that I get Vp equals 0.025 times Vs. And then divide both sides by 0.025. Okay, so you're given that the primary voltage is four. So now if we do four divided by 0 0.025, we get that the secondary voltage is 160.
where the unit will be volts. Okay, so moving on to the next question, we have been given a flow chart of a remotely controlled door bolt. So you might have been to, um, well, I don't know where they'd have it, sometimes hotels, sometimes kind of store cupboards in the school, uh, flat doors have a kind of electronic keypad. So when the correct numbers are entered into the keypad, the transformer switches on and the door can be opened. So we have a 230 volt supply going to a switch, which controls, which is controlled by the keypad. If that switch gets closed because you put the correct combination in, the transformer um, switches on and the door can be opened. It goes to this thing called a rectifier. Don't worry too much about that. And then it goes into the coil. Okay, which allows the iron bolt on the door to open and close. So to unlock it, unlock it. So it goes from 230 volts to 12 volts. So we can see that it must be a step down transformer. Okay, so you can see that it goes from a higher voltage to a lower voltage. Therefore, it must be a step down transformer. What does the abbreviation AC stand for? That's alternating current. Hopefully we know that by now. And complete these sentences using the correct words from the box. When a current flows in the coil, the coil becomes a what? And the coil, the iron bolt, which moves so what would go in those gaps? Okay, so when a current flows in the coil, the coil becomes a magnet and the coil attracts the iron bolt. So remember the coil is magnetized, so therefore it can attract a magnetic material, which is iron, so the iron bolt. So the coil attracts the iron bolt and lifts the iron bolt upwards so that the door is unlatched and can be opened. So you can see here, uh, we might not be able to see it, actually it's a bit small. Um, iron bolt which can slide up and down. So that coil attracts the iron bolt and forces it upwards to unlatch the door. Okay, so this was a six mark question in a recent AQA GCSE paper. So really recent, really up to date and a kind of good six marker to practice. So it says, describe the similarities and differences between a step up transformer and a step down transformer. You should include details of construction, including the materials used and the effect the transformer has on the input potential difference. So things that we need to be including in our answer. So first of all, the similarities between a step up transformer and a step down transformer are that a step up increases the voltage from a lower voltage to a higher voltage. It has more turns on the right hand side than it does on the left hand side. Um, so more turns on the secondary coil than the primary coil. The step down transformer uh, has less turns on a secondary coil coil and um, more turns on the primary coil. Um, so that's the first thing you'd say in terms of construction. Some similarities would be that it's got an iron core. Um, so they both have an iron core no matter whether they're a step up or a step down. The coils are um, 
are still made from the same material. The effect the transformer has on the input potential difference is obviously going to be different. So it will either increase it, step up, or decrease it, step down. So they are the main points that I would get into your answer. Um, core is made of magnetic material, so be specific, say that it's iron, because um, the question does say including the materials used. They both have a primary and a secondary coil, um, but just the number of the coils is different. Both have two coils, they're both made from, um, the coils are both made from conducting conductors, so for example copper, um, you don't necessarily need to know that, you just need to know that the Coils are good conductors. Coils are always on opposite sides, no matter whether it's step down or step up. And yeah, that's all you would need to say. So lots and lots of different points that you can make um, about iron, about the core, about the coils, about having coils on different sides. So that is probably what I would call a nice six marker. Not too much kind of explaining or using your own kind of um, thinking to get your answer. It's really just a recall um, exercise, which tends to be a little bit easier than explaining. Okay, so I think we'll finish this um, and do this as our last question. So this is using our new equation for um, for a transformer. So we have a 240 volt AC input. So that's our input voltage. So otherwise known as our primary potential difference. We then have a voltmeter. So we know that we're going to need to be, we're going to have to work out the secondary voltage. All right, there's a voltmeter there for a reason. Now the primary coil, you're told, has 48,000 turns. So the primary coil, primary coil is N, P. So 48,000 is N, P. The secondary coil is 4,000 turns. Secondary coil is 4,000 turns. So the secondary coil is N, S. So N, P is 48,000. N, S is 4,000. The input voltage VP is 240. So what is the output voltage? If you've forgotten the equation, I'll write it here for you. Put your answers in the chat. What is the output voltage? So VS. So you're going to do NP divided by and S, so 48,000 divided by 4,000 is 12, which equals VP over VS. So 240 is VP divided by something equals 12. So 240 divided by 20 is 12. So we know that our secondary voltage is 20. Okay. Now explain how the use of this transformer could be adapted to transform a low voltage into a higher voltage. So currently it's taking a higher voltage and changing it to a lower voltage. To change that and make it a uh, step up transformer, we just put more coils in the secondary and less coils in the primary. So that's the end of today's session. I hope you enjoyed the quiz um, and we'll continue to do more of those in different webinars. As always, this webinar has been recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube later. Um, to find other resources, you can go to Physics and Math Tutor, the website. And if you do want personalized one-on-one -on -one tutoring um, from my tutor with tutors like me, um, then that can be done through the My Tutor website. So I hope you enjoyed to today's lesson. If you're joining us for um, webinars tomorrow, then I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Bye.